Facebook is under scrutiny over the role the social media giant played in Myanmar, which led to violence against Rohingya. Whistleblower Frances Haugen gave a testimony to US senators last week about her concerns over links with Facebook posts that allegedly incited violence. According to an article from The Guardian, Haugen told US senators that what we saw in Myanmar and are now seeing in Ethiopia are only the opening chapters of a story so terrifying no one wants to read the end of it. More than 750,000 Rohingya refugees fled Myanmar in a bit to escape a brutal military campaign launch in August 2017 against them. They experienced vague brutal beatings, disappearances, all committed by Myanmar forces. The UN and rights organisations accused Myanmar of ethnically cleansing Rohingya from northern Rakhine state. In total, 1.2 million Rohingya were forced to seek shelter in neighbouring Bangladesh. But what does Facebook have to do with all this, you might be asking? After Myanmar's military seized power by launching a coup in February of this year, Facebook decided to ban the Myanmar military forces, citing its concern for incitement of military violence and human rights abuses. Good move, you might think. But only a month later, Facebook's algorithm amplified content prompting its users to view and like Myanmar military pages and posts inciting violence. It is alleged that Facebook spread misinformation that could lead to physical harm against ethnic minorities in Myanmar. That same day, the military killed over 40 innocent civilians and attacked others on the street. It's no coincidence that Facebook may have played a major role when almost half the country's population in Myanmar are on Facebook, making it a minefield for misinformation and incitement of violence to spread against the Rohingya. There were thousands of posts that started gaining traction by nationalist anti-Rohingya supporters and an array of fake stories that led to the violence. Despite Haugen's accusations and revelations made public about Facebook putting profit above the safety of others, the company denies involvement with Mark Zuckerberg stating in a blog post that it's not just true. Other countries have also had to face harm from Facebook's algorithms over the years. In 2018, for example, Facebook had to apologise for not removing hate speech during the anti-Muslim riots in Sri Lanka that consequently led to deadly violence against Sri Lanka's Muslim minority. Showing that this is not the first time Facebook has come under scrutiny and it may not be the last. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.